Hey, good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for joining us uh, today. I am joined by Charlie Tomeo. Did I say that right, Charlie? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I, I thought so. Uh, of Axiom, CRO of Axiom. Uh, some big shoes to fill in any organization, but uh, Axiom is growing and, and, and worldwide uh, quite a quite a bit of shoes to fill there. Um, so uh, a quick couple uh, housekeeping items before we get going. Uh, this is the uh, MSP initiative, and uh, we run these sessions every Tuesday and Thursday with industry guests to speak about hot topics. Sometimes we just gab and open up the floor and you never know who might join us. We get some quite, quite some characters on here, um, but we have a lot of fun with it and it's, and it's always good. So uh, Charlie, what's going on in the, in the world of Axiant these days? Uh, just been, been real busy. Um... I feel like it's a bit back to normal uh, travel wise. Seems like I've been spending more time in the airport. Um, you know, the team for the most part has been, um, you know, we we're at IT Nation last week, uh, secure. Uh, we had a, um, we have an Italian MSP that, uh, Disney that just focuses on MSPs. So uh, we were there last week um, in um, just, just outside of Bologna. So it was interesting to see even an event like that um, had 350 MSPs. Wow. And it was the first time they did it. Um, it's a MSP um, day that they they host kind of for the technical people within the country. So it's very much um, regional, but it was amazing to see um, out of those 350, I think we uh, wound up having eight signups for for try 80 signups for trials in, in one day. So that's you know, fantastic. results were great. It was definitely worth going. It was good seeing people. Um, I wound up going and uh, bumped into uh, my good friend, Luis from uh, Scalepad. So, uh, you know, it's, it's amazing who you run into as you're traveling, but um, yeah, it, it, it's been, um, it's been pretty, uh, pretty good for us so far this year. Yeah, so you, you, I mean, obviously it's really cool because you're getting to see you you jump from one country to another. How are you seeing the engagement? Are you seeing the engagement really? Like you say, you signed up a lot, but how was the engagement at IT Nation Secure versus your Italian event? Well, you know, it's obvious that the um, you know the numbers were quite different, right? I mean, you can't compare um, what they did there just because of sure. the size, you know, the, the size of the opportunity. But um, IT Nation was great. Um, you know, it's it, it's always good. You know, we we wound up having a, um, a speaking slot there, so that's always good. You know, you want to make sure that you know you're talking you know about you know kind of hot topics. Um, you know, as well as uh, you know, we're able to see um, Robert Chaffee, who's one of our partners from Progressive Computing. He was on stage, you know, kind of talking about, you know you know, something that normally you don't talk about, right, which is, you know, dealing with, you know, getting ransomed and, and, um, and then, you know, the vendors that kind of helped him get out of it. So I don't know if you've seen that, but um, if you haven't, I would definitely go online. It's, it's, it's pretty interesting. Yeah. I'll have to yeah do that. It looks like it's back. I mean, the, the numbers for uh, secure were, um, uh, you know, unbelievable compared to uh, last year where people still were kind of figuring out if we should be out in public and, and, and actually be with people right? Yep. to see it's back. And how was the mood? How were the, how was everybody's mood? Was it upbeat or was uh, other than the complaints about gas prices, right? Um, how, yeah. how was everybody, everybody's mood? I don't think anybody's, you know, the, you know, yeah, we're all complaining about those things, but I think uh, nobody's really complaining about seeing one another. Right. And, and it's, you know, it, it is something that, you know, I know most of us have kind of been back, uh, on the road doing it, but it's still, um, you know, I think, I think, you know, people still realize what they had missed uh, while they didn't have it. And so I think everybody seems to be just on it. Mm -hmm. How about the business climate? Are you, are you hearing positive things from the MSPs? I mean, obviously signups are, are up for you there from some different events. So what, what kind of mood do you see there from people? Yeah, I think we're saying, you know, we're definitely seeing some positive, um, signs from that, you know, I think one of the things that um, is top of mind, you know, you talk about gas, but it certainly is, uh, you know, folks are looking at opportunities where, um, as you know, MSPs always look at ways to uh, save time and save money. 
And so, you know, we put them in, in a pretty good opportunity with some of the tech that we've developed over the pandemic, right? So our direct to cloud um, seems to be doing real well, especially with uh, still having challenges with hardware uh, and the like. So, and, and then, you know, it, as you know, there's constant changes in our space, right? So, you know, from all the different acquisitions and everything. So um, I think we're getting a lot more attention, you know, just from that, just people are looking for alternatives than, uh, you know, kind of the, the usual suspects. So sure. So, I, I mean, it, it's it's an interesting thing for you guys. And, and I think, you know, I see a lot of MSPs trying to make that shift to MSSPs, you know, whatever whatever that truly means, right? Because it means a lot to others. But Axian as a company has made a major shift. I mean, you've, you've gone from that, you know, a couple of years back, just that traditional backup cloud storage type company, and you've really moved into that security space. What is that looking for like for you guys? What, what kind of pain have you guys felt trying to transition into that? Yeah, I think, it, it, you know, as, as you know, we all have to evolve or, or die, right? So, um, you know, I think it was a good decision to make. You know, I'll be uh, with Axiant um, two years in October. So, you know, a lot of the stuff and decisions were made uh, a bit before that. Uh, me joining, but, you know, it's definitely something that you have to be, you know, you know, a bit more, you have to offer more. And um, as you can see, security is, is everywhere. Everyone now is, is in security, no matter what you, um, what offering that you have. I mean, we've seen the big push with, you know, all the RMMs, um, you know, they're not focusing, you know, they're still doing all the other things, but those are more check boxes, but um, it's really a race to see who's going to come up with that security platform uh, that, to your point, really helps those MSPs convert to that MSSP or at least having that very strong security posture. So it, for me, it's been fun, especially being, you know, coming from the web root side of things and, and you know, doing things for you know, almost 20 years on the security side. It's always it's always something that's top of mind for me. Yeah. What, what are the, what are the biggest struggles that you're seeing the MSPs face in their transition right now? I mean, obviously, like you said, you came from web and now you're over here. So you've, you've got foundationally, you know, all the, the, the collective years, like you said, of watching this transition happen in the channel. So what, what are the, what are the big struggles that MSPs are facing right now? I, I think the biggest thing, and, and it, you know, I guess it's a good problem to have is there's so many different companies and offerings out there. And it's just kind of making sense of what you need to do, right? Because, you know, I think, uh, as you know, Peter, you know, it's it's always great to build out your reference architecture and your and your stack and, and what you're actually offering out there. But then it's the actually selling that end customer. And now with everyone tightening their belt, you know, how many different things can you bolt on top? And 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 now all of a sudden you're going from charging 150 a month is it 200 is it 300 you know you know i think uh you know at at some point some some industries are okay they could absorb that you know if you're if if you're based on some compliance issues but i think everyone else it's going to be a little tougher um and i do think it's the challenge of having you know having that trusted advisor relationship with some of these vendors because you know right now we're all a, a bit behind with having the security professionals to fill all the roles so you're not going to get it's going to be harder for the, the certainly hard on the vendor side it's hard, hard on the msp side to get the people that have that security you know just knowledge and experience so i think those are some of the things that they're going through but you know, as you see all you have to do is go on linkedin and social and we have a lot of smart people that are out there trying to, you know, help and offer, offer their services um, to kind of make some sense of it. So I just su suggest uh, doing your research is probably the best way to go. Yeah. I, and I think the MSPs, you know, with having these shows coming back and having all the industry experts really helps them get reconnected to, to do that, where they've lost some of that during the COVID you know, stretch. It was it was a long stretch where you know it was great to be able to pick up a phone and have a meeting like this. But there's something about that in person relationship that that this business just thrives on. Uh, you know, do you no, do you see what do you what do you what impact do you see with just 
Yeah, the the the, the events still are, you know, that they are king, right? Because you know, even if you go and and you know, we've all done the uh, you know the webinar approach, and um, we've you know we work with different vendors, making sure we're trying to offer the best thing that we can, you know, to you know to to our partners. But you know, going in there, seeing somebody, educating yourself, seeing potentially you know five ten vendors in a day breakout sessions and uh, really where the work gets done is then at night you're running into that person that presented and you're actually able to ask the questions that maybe weren't as easy to ask during the, during the conference you're getting feedback from them um, and you're just kind of building those partnerships and relationships I think that's that's something that uh, you know I still see the, uh, the the bar seem to be a lot more crowded than they were uh, you know, this time last year, got to, got to muscle your way and push, yeah. push through to get to the counter to get your drink. Right. Yeah. So. But, but it's good. You know, I mean, that's, that's how we, uh, you know, how we build relationships and, and offer, um, you know, just a bit more, um, you know, to them. So, you, you know, a little off topic off business here for a minute. I, I, I heard a rumor you were a Jersey guy. Yes, I am. Well, Where? I'm actually living in New Jersey, uh, grew up on Long Island. All right. Uh, I, I heard that accent, but you don't hear mine. Yeah. So, you know, I, I haven't lived in Jersey probably for 35, 40 years. Oh, well, there you but, go. But I'm, I'm a North Jersey guy. I grew up in Edgewater right under the DW Bridge, right? So, uh, so right. I was there. So what, was were you a Rangers fan? Yes. I mean, yeah. yeah. It's uh they did, they did it right this year, I think, uh, considering they got a young team. I don't think they were expected to get as far as they did. And, uh, you know, Lightning, Lightning's a tough team to beat. Yeah, yeah. And we won't talk about basketball right now because Brooklyn is, you know, they're, they're not, they weren't even, weren't even there. But we have the two hottest teams in baseball right now. Yeah, yeah. Right? Absolutely. Yankees. Are you Yankee or Met fan? Or are you yeah, yeah, Yankee fan? They don't seem to be letting off the brakes at all either. No, they're the, they're, they're the number one team in baseball right now. Right? Oh, so. Ahead. so hopefully uh, they could stay healthy and we'll, we'll see how it goes. As, as we all know, it's a long season and uh, you know, we'll see what October looks like. Well, you know, Charlie, we got, I'm a Met fan. So and you're a Yankee fan, so we'll we'll have to we'll have to put a drink on the next conference we see each other. That uh, you know the Subway Series will be coming up here in July, right? So absolutely, yeah, you're not a Jets fan, too, are you? No, I'm not. I am a Giants fan. I I, I grew up in in Giant Stadium, and you know that that was the that was it for me. You're so. probably not an Islander fan, are you? Are you down? Uh, you know. I, I, I was a Rangers fan and I became a, uh, a Devils fan over time um, as they came on the scene and Stevens was in there and he was just, you know, that hard hitting, dirty player that, uh, you know, yeah, they were just everybody, everybody loved to, everybody loved to hate, you know, but uh, they haven't done much the last couple of years, but I'll, I'll stay true to them. Yeah, why not? And then, of course, my wife is a you know down in Flyers, and every time they win, I have to wear a Flyer shirt. It's just you know, I, I don't know. Luckily, that doesn't happen too often, so you don't have to. That, that it, it, it happens you. enough where it puts a lot of salt on the wounds, you know. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna say that thing's still in the in the package. Yep. And of course, George. If George was on here, he'd be Philadelphia right down the line. There would be no 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 break. So. Yeah, I, I figured he went on a cheesesteak run. That's why we didn't get to see him today. No, but, but in two weeks, you know, we're going to be on the, the Channel Strong tour. We're going to be in Philadelphia area and New Jersey. So there, right. there will be cheesesteaks. I'll have to take a ride down. I know he, I know he's, uh, he's definitely somebody that he, he, he's Philly true and true. Yep. So. And we will be in July. We're going to be up in Mawa and White Plains too. So great. So, but um, so one of the things I heard you say was during COVID, you guys did a lot of product introductions. Tell me about some of those and uh, what kind of impacts are happening on the industry as well as, as Axiom. Yeah, I think one of the things that uh, got through a bit was, you know, it, it, as I think we all know, um, you know, the, the BDR space is very crowded. There's uh, enough vendors, I think, as a whole, but certainly even in the MSP space, 
Um, so, you know, the thought process was, you know, what, what could we do that's a bit different um, that nobody else is doing? We're seeing more and more people, um, you know, I think we, we all could agree that the pandemic accelerated a lot of people's move to cloud. And, you know, I, I used the example of my parents who were in their 80s, never used Amazon until the pandemic. So not the same exact thing, but all of a sudden they went from going to the grocery store all the time and buying everything through that to now everything's getting uh, delivered to them. So, and, and we're seeing the same thing, I think, with, uh, you know, just overall pe people's push to, you know, to Azure, um, to AWS. And so, uh, you know, building out something that, you know, is really cloud-based, is not dependent on um, hardware, um, but we do have, it is fully functioning. So we have everything from, you know, a local cash component. So if you want to have a, uh, you know, if you want to have a copy sitting locally, you can. Um, bare metal restore, virtual office. So it gives you the flexibility. Um, and, and certainly with people, you know, working from anywhere, uh, it also gives you that flexibility starting to back up things that people didn't really care about anymore, which is some of those, uh, you know, endpoint devices that are out there. So, um, you know, it, it was really good. When I came on board, we launched it. Um, we've seen, you know, incredible adoption um, for it. And, um, you know, they, uh, the team took kind of the rest of last year to really build it, build it out as a solid full offering. Um, so we have people that are, um, you know, moving to it left and right. So I, I, I asked the one question of, uh, and I'm not going to say any, any magic competitor words, but we have some acquisitions that have happened in the, in the BDR space and it's causing a lot of turmoil. How, how are you guys reacting to that? So, you know, I, I don't know that it changes what we do, right? We're, we're here. We want to be um, a trusted partner. We want to earn people's business. Um, so, you know, I, you know, I think we know what happens, like, you know, that there's, there's certainly vendors in a space that people just love, right? They love the brand. They love the people, um, you know, they, and they've done a great job. And now, you know, unfortunately we've seen as Peter, you know, where there's so many changes uh, where, you know, there's acquisitions after acquisition. I mean, I know, uh, you know, in, in 2019, Weber got acquired after me being there 15 years and seven months later, I was part of Carbonite, Carbonite got acquired by open tech. So it's just a different dynamic, uh, you know, people change, but for us, I mean, our, our, our approach really is, you know, just, test our products um, if they fit what your needs are. Um, and we're seeing, you know, some great results there is, you know, we're looking to help you through if there's any transition that you want to make, uh, but certainly help you with, you know, any of the new business that you're going after as well. So, um, you know, the, the data protection side, it's not the easiest thing in the world for people to shift and lift. Um, and the way that we built our products, you make it fairly easy. Yeah, that's that's what I heard. I've heard you've got some really nice transition ways for people to transition over and uh, make it easy to get into the platform and shift from one to the other. So yeah, so we're just you know just do, doing what doing what we all expect us to do, right? Is be there to help, and that's really that what the team's goal is. So what where where's your next? Uh, where are you guys going next? What's on the roadmap for you guys? You know, I, I think it's, uh, you know, it's a lot of what you talked about with, you know, just on the security side, making sure that we are protecting the data um, and, you know, really just having, um, you know, the, the most solid product out there. Um, you know, for us, you know, I, you know, we, we kind of kid around here a bit at Axiant, but everybody, you know, if you ask, you know, uh, for the elevator pitch or what do you do? And ultimately we have one job. And that's to protect your data. That's it. All the other things are nice, you know, and we could talk about, you know, backing up uh, Microsoft 365 Cloud and, and all the different features and virtual apps. We could, you know, endlessly talk about that. But at the end of the day, our only job is to make sure that your data is protected, your data is backed up. And so those are the things that we're going to make sure that we're solidifying as um, with everything, with, with, with all the uh, turmoil in the world from, you know, war in Ukraine and, and now everyone's dealing like you started out with, you know, 
inflation and gas price and everything else. We know what happens. All these things that are happening bring out the bad actors more and more. Mm -hmm. and they're just making sure that um, that you can count on us. So I, you know, interestingly enough, and I don't think I think we've had a lot of partners, you know, channel partners that have come on the show and on the on the cast for, you know, years now, right? Because George started this two years ago with MSPI and, and going, but uh, Ukraine, it's an interesting situation. You know, what do you, do you, do you guys have clients in Ukraine and has it, has it changed or have you seen a move my data center or get me out of this data center and into another or any of that kind of stuff? No, I think it's, you know, it, you know, it's just one of those things where it's something else that's top of mind for folks. So just, you know, people do want to understand, you know, where their data is, so you know where our data centers are. You know they're asking questions about things like that, but there really hasn't been anything major. I think it's more or less just the overall turmoil that it's created throughout the, the world. Mm -hmm. It's a bigger issue for us. Sure, sure. So um, you know, there's other things like uh, I heard this week that uh, Microsoft announced that they they bought an AI tool to enhance their security offering. Uh, what do you what do you think of these AI offerings that are making their way into the security platforms? You know, I think it's like everything else. You know, um, they're they're good, but they're only as good as uh, you know. The problem with any any platform like that, you always have to be concerned. I think more with false positives uh, than actually what they find. But you know, any, anything that they can do to help. Um, but you know, I've seen this for years. You know, uh, where people have talked about the different things that Microsoft working on. I think they certainly have gotten better at things. But uh, you know, I remember sitting in. You know, I think I was at, at Weber for six months and they were saying, yeah, Microsoft's coming out with a way to just get rid of spyware altogether and get rid of malware. You'll never see it again. And you know, so everyone's like, oh, geez, I guess we're going to be out of jobs in six months. And, you know, it just kind of never, never came, it came to fruition. So, you know, I, I, I still think you'll see, uh, you know, the, the, the players that are out there. I mean, you know, you've seen even in the past, you know, few years, the different, everything from uh, MDR, XDR, SOC, um, you know, all the different uh, products that are out there and companies that are really standalone, that are going and building stuff that they're looking at things a bit differently. So, uh, you know, I think any, anything helps, but uh, it's still gonna take the, uh, the overall community ecosystem to, to fix this. Yeah, so, uh, you know, with all these little security companies that have popped up and they're all emerging and all that, what are you, what are your thoughts on uh, consolidation? It seems like in the last 12 months, there's more security companies doing all these little niche type things, but you know, the MSPs are like, I got to add this one, this one, and this one to get the solution or so what do you, what do you think is going to happen in our space with all of this? Yeah, I, I think it's interesting to see because I, I love following, you know, the Facebook groups and, and certainly Reddit and, you know, everyone kind of has their formula for, you know, the different tools that they use and the reasons behind it. And a lot of them are fairly concrete uh, reasons why they do it. Um, you know, I think one of the things that, you know, the, the economy may or may not help with this is, you know, a lot of these, a lot of these vendors have unbelievable valuations. So it's a lot harder if you're, you know, if you have to go out, buy something and pay 15 to 20 X of revenue. And then you're trying to like, just make it a component of something, right. Or building it right. into something else, because now if they're already paying you a certain amount, bolting that thing on, it's no different than keeping it as a standalone vendor. But I think, I think you're going to see some of that stuff. You know, we saw that, um, you know, I know the, uh, you know, the guys at uh, Scout, you know, were doing a good job in the MSP space and, and they got kind of picked up by Barracuda. So we get to see kind of how they integrate that uh, for their partners moving forward. But, uh, you know, I think it's definitely something that, that has to happen to make it a bit easier for you. Sure. Um... You know, what's what's next for you guys? Do you continue to 
develop internal or do you continue to look for those kind of acquisitions for those hot hot players yeah you know we, we've always tried you know tried partnering with um you know vendors that kind of complement what we do you know a lot of that is more you know kind of marketing based um but you know i definitely would say you know taking a look at um you know just increasing our security posture is is going to be something that's top of mind here and that, and whether that's something that we you know we do ourselves or it's something that we work with uh there and there's the man and, himself. and there he is and there he is what's up guys peter, peter told me you're on a cheesesteak run oh yeah it was great we, that's Absolutely. what we heard that's what we heard but i'm waiting for mine for two weeks hey when you come in i'll get it to you fresh i mean charlie's not that far away either yeah. Yeah, let's, let's, let's 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 be fair how was said, uh, how was italy charlie i was saying it 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 was amazing to see they hadn't had that conference in two years. There were 350 uh, MSPs there. And uh, in one day, we wound up getting 80 trials out of it. That's awesome. Which, you know, pretty good. You know, it's, it's, uh, I mean, 80 out of 300, that's a great percentage. Yeah. So it, 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 it was really good, um, you know, to kind of see everybody. Uh, you know, I have to say that uh, the Italians know how to uh, run a conference food wise and um, and drink. So I think our uh, I mean, that's their specialty, man. It, 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 it is. It's not I'm not going to say that we suffered there. I think our uh, our takeaway gift instead of a T-shirt or something was an actual uh, bottle of red wine. Wow. Look at you. I can, see, I can see you coming. I can see you coming through uh, customs in a New York airport with a wheel of cheese and a bottle of wine. <laughs> you, know, you know what's funny is, you know, I, I've been partnering with those guys for years. So I know a lot of the MSPs, and they had a half a wheel of cheese that the price tag on it was about ten dollars. It's something that would cost us here uh, probably a couple of hundred. And they're like, oh, why don't you just take this home with you? I'm like, I'm not going to be able to get that back into. Uh, into the country and they're like oh, okay we'll just have I, have, I have problems going through domestic security man well I listen like... george i i feel your pain i i, I know I, I i i see you all the time they're always picking you up for something i never yeah. used to have problems until you start hanging out with george i, I he'll tell you he'll tell you Got, the guy's of... like the, the guy's like a veteran right he uh, put in his time you know you know you know South Carolina, right? You know, in the sticks a little bit. And like now he's getting stopped every time he's going to the airport. I'm just cracking up. I'm like, guilt by association. I'll tell you. <laughs> didn't, right. didn't you get stopped? And, for I, a, and I mean, a, when you when you look when you look at this, I fill that profile, I guess. I don't no, know. Didn't you get stopped because the guy thought you had a couple quarters in your bag and you're like, guy, even even if you did, like, what does what, that matter? Is that uh, legal? Uh, I, I, I asked I asked the lead the lead supervisor at at TSA, I said, um, can you tell me, is that like some code word for something in the bag or uh, when did coins in your in your bag become illegal? I mean, like, and he said, and, they're they're not. I don't know why. Him, I don't know why he stopped you for a cup of coins. The guy was him if you have if I have coins in my bag, you can have them. Yeah, I said, find them in their yours. It, it, really, them in their ears. it really is crazy. I remember a few years ago getting on a flight and this woman sitting next to me and, and she's, you know, I don't know, she's probably in her 60s and she takes out an apple and then she takes out a paring knife and she's, and I look over and I'm like, how did you get a knife? She's like, what are you like, <laughs> like, oh my gosh. She's like, I can't believe it. She's like, I always keep this knife because, you know, when I'm eating fruit or something in my bag, she's like, I didn't even think about it. I'm like, I said, I'm not concerned that you have it. I said, I'm more concerned that no one noticed you had it. Crazy. Yeah. Uh, Charlie, last session, I know you and Pete probably talked all about what's happening in your world. Last session, we kind of like talked about a hard reality of what's happening right there out there now because big companies, in between companies, little companies, anybody who has outside money right now seems to be cutting headcount by double digits. Like yeah. almost overnight, this thing happened. Um, obviously the stock, you know, the, the, the regular publicly traded stock market is not doing great right now. And, uh, I, you know, I used to say there was a six month gap in, you know, between like the regular world and the, our sandbox, right. Before things start to kind of happen. And, and it seems like it's happening in parallel now. You notice that? 
Yeah, I think it's a it's an interesting thing because like even you know as you know with the MSPs and we we all kind of went we lived it with them right is I think with the from the pandemic approach is everyone was worried and then you know then we realized fairly quickly that most MSPs were essential workers so you know you talk to most people you'd say oh you're back in the office like I never left the office you're like what do you mean am I back in the office so you know I, I think. People will look at it as a way, and especially because there's, especially in our space where there's a lot of private equity money, people have taken investments and, um, you know, I think, you know, George, you and I have talked about this before where some of the investments, you know, we just couldn't do the math. Like, how are you getting there? I still can't. Yeah. I still can't. I know. I mean, some of it's jealousy, you know, I, I mean, love to, love to get, you know, 20 X on something, but, uh, no, I think, uh, you know, I think now, you know, people are tightening their belts a bit. You know, we see interest rates going up. Um, we certainly, you know, I'm seeing that, you know, and, and, and hearing from other people that uh, they're not as um, the additional investments, I would say, there's being a little more due diligence on them. They're not uh, looking to potentially offer as much or the, certainly the multipliers um, that were out there. So, I think that's one of the reasons why you're going to have it, right? I think, you know, we, we, we do what we always do is, you know, and, and we, we learn some things, but we don't completely learn, right? We saw it with .com. We saw it with the, the, the housing meltdown. You know, it's, it's the same thing. I mean, I'm sure you guys, you know, ha have seen it in the past year and a half, two years, where all of a sudden your house is worth 40, 50% more than it was. So this is a company called SAS Capital. They do you know, funding for smaller companies, okay? Like not, like maybe seed round funding, okay? So they've been doing this private company valuation chart since 08, right? Yeah. You can see here in 19, 20, and 21, right? Like this thing kind of tapped out like at 16, 17%. And then like now we're at like, you know, pre, like it's, <laughs> it's like 8X, right? On the multiples. And like, I'm sure this goes down when they post it next month, right? At the end of, of, uh, of June. So, I mean, it's very intriguing to me that, you know, some people are just good about getting ahead of the market. Some people aren't, I, you know, like as an MSP, do you start asking your vendors, hey, do you have any investors? <laughs> like what, how do you know until people start disappearing, Charlie? I mean, it's, I'm not trying to be, make fun of it, right? But like people do business with people. It's a relationship business. Let's be right. fair. Not everybody's buying from App, uh, Amazon, okay? Um, so like companies that are completely outside funded versus kind of bootstrap, right? They work, they work, and then maybe they down the line take money, right? We're talking about two completely different right. ideologies here. So like what, you know, like now you're between the MSPs saying that the big guys are getting gobbled up and then like the small guys are, get, are getting cut down. Like, is there anything in between, right? You see what I'm saying? Yeah, and and you know, you you know, George, you know, you you you've run a bunch of different businesses, and everybody has a different approach. And certainly on the vendor side, I've seen it for years. I've been through it where, you know, you get a little money, and it's like hire 20 people tomorrow. Yeah, and you know, yeah, the thing that I think that, you know, we should just all take away from this is, you know, how do we get to a point where people just look at it and say, you know, I'm going to be a bit more responsible, right? If, if, if these are my targets, how do I go get there with the resources that I potentially have? And if that means, and, and most people that I know that are successful in our space have no problem with working a little harder, Right especially salespeople, if you put me in a position where, you know, I could get to my number or over and I have to work a little harder, that's better than you adding two more people. And now, even if I work hard, I'm only going to get to 70% because my pie has been, been chopped up. So I think some of the things you're going to see is just people going back through doing some of the things that, that, you know, m most of us should do anyhow, which is we should be looking at you know, what the performance looks like on our teams, you know, where are we really at and, and making the, the right decisions as opposed to waiting till you kind of have to make a bigger decision. 
I, I think the other interesting dynamic, Charlie, and we've all seen this, especially recently, like these people getting crazy salary amounts, crazy package offers. Hey, you're going to get uh, yeah, potentially vesting equity in the company at some point. You're yeah. going to get this. You're going to, it's not just 401k match, right? Like it's crazy, you know, entitlements Which, that they try and package to get people to come in the door. It's all fun and games until it doesn't show up. I mean, if you get cut on the street because you're getting paid too much because like, you know, the company's literally printing money, <laughs> but now the money printer shut down. Yeah, we, we had, uh, I mean, we really had a tough time filling the seats last year. Um, you know, and again, it was one of those things where, you know, the easy way to handle it, if you don't have the people, if you have good salespeople, you tell them, hey, we're going to pay you, you know, extra where you close anything on top of that out of your territory because we need to fill somebody in. Most of them just jump on it. But um, it was amazing. We, we had some people that came over, got a raise to come over. And quit in two months because their old company offered forty percent more. You know, so it's so now you know it's like you're changing the game, right? You're moving. You know, the the, the market was this, and now it's here. And unfortunately, I think we're all we're all wired that now that's the new benchmark. So this is the only amount of money I'm going to take. And um, you know, it may just be an opportunity for us. Uh, George, to reset where we're at. I, I mean, you know, there's reality and then there's the NFL, right? Like, hey, when one quarterback gets a $300 million contract, the next guy doesn't want to take less than that, right? I like, but then, like, that's not how it works in the real world, right? Right. <laughs> at some point, the market adjusts. And I just don't like, I think people have to bring their expectations down to say, hey, listen, you can make good money. But by the way, you need to actually work for it a little bit. And don't expect to be the VP of XYZ company on day one. I mean, I, I don't know how else to say that, but I think that market correction is happening right now. Yeah. You got a lot of people that are going to have some, some hard facts to face though, too, George, with that, you know, because they've been spoiled for so long because of how hiring has happened. And then you got that, you know, the great resignation here. So, you know, if you push on me too hard, I don't know. Am I excited about it? I, I, I don't know. I'll just leave because I made that extra money and I maybe put it away right in the bank account. So I can, I can tolerate a little bit of downtime instead of work time. So, I, 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 Hey, listen, if you can be the TikTok superstar, I know Sade secretly wants to be one. Um, go for it. <laughs> don't let me stop you. I mean, if you can, if you can go out there and be the YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, I mean, you want to look like the hand model. I, I don't know. Rock on. Don't let me stop you. Go make as much money as you can possibly make. But like when you find out that that's not real for a lot of people and it isn't, don't, I'm not saying don't try, but when you realize you come to that, that day where you're like, eh, it's not like that. Then you got to have to work and like, it's okay. Works. Okay. It's not going to hurt you, but you should actually try. And here's the thing. Be motivated when you work. Right. Because that's how you learn the people who are just dragging their feet. I mean, those are the people that are just like they go from job to job to job every three, four, five, six months, however long it takes. And then like they actually didn't get anything out of it. And so like that's this reset that I'm talking about. There's still good money to be made out there. You're just not going to get a money printer anymore. I think that that's the case for at least two years. That's my crystal ball. Take it for what it's worth. I have probably not a lot of background information other than just a gut feeling. You can make good money but we're going to work for it. And if you're a good worker and a hard worker and you're willing to like really go, go hard on it, you're going to make a lot of money, but they're just not going to gift it to you anymore. And like, that's how it should have been anyway. I think that the, you know, the payday scheme, <laughs> I call it a scheme, like the, Hey, we have so much money. We're just going to give everybody a ton of money uh, days that ended. I, I think you're not going to see that for a while. Charlie, you could say I'm crazy. No. But like, I think the big guys, the guys that we all complain about with all these mergers and all this stuff right. that they're coming next. They're not going to be uh, impervious to this either. No, I agree. I mean, you, you see that all the time. I mean, I, I remember early on in my career, I, I worked uh, at Merrill Lynch uh, in the IT side and, you know, 70, 80,000 employees. And then every so many years, they'd be like, all right, we're laying off 10,000, 10,000, you know, and, everybody's like, oh my God, you know, what, what are we going to do? It's, it, it's unbelievable. And then they bloat back up in two years. You know, they, they, they'd gain that 10,000 back. And, 
you know, I, I think we don't have, I, I think why it's a bit more real here is, you know, depending on the size of the vendor, you know, if you're, if you're two, 300 employees, certainly if you're an MSP, that's even 30, 40 people, like there's not a lot of places to hide. Yeah, it's true. You know, but even, even when you guys, like when you threw up that thing about the SAS index, George, I mean, how many, how many PE companies go into a SAS vendor and expect them to make money? Not in the first four or five years. All right. So, you know, many of these companies that are getting the hits right now that we're, we're seeing across the board are in that first four or five years. Right. And they're telling them, you know, it, it might be that the PE guys are starting to say, you know what, maybe we want to see some profit. Maybe we're not going to, you know, we, you got to tighten your belt. So, so you can get a little bit leaner and smarter and, but it's and make some money. That conversation didn't come until the interest rate hurt, hit a certain point. Yeah. Uh, that's true too. That's true too. Yeah, I think you're well, right. Look, and they and, borrow money to to spend money too, right? Yeah, and I, and I don't think that you know the, the the PE guys maybe just are saying, "Hey, we need to be a bit more mindful of what we're doing." I don't think that any of them are looking at this as like the short game, right? But you know, you don't want you know it's it's kind of like if if you find uh, termites in your house and it's only in in one beam, you don't say ah, I'm just going to leave it, right? Let me not worry about that. And then you come back six months later and uh, you know, half, half of the house has fallen down. So you know, I, think, I think it's just you know, people just being a bit smarter, due diligence uh, on, on what they're doing. And I you know, also think a lot of what we do, we, we move, everyone here moves fast. What we do is not for the faint of heart, whether you're an MSP, whether you're on the vendor side. And so I think... Um, people now may be pausing to say, hey, we're running so fast. Let me take a look at this stuff again. Let me look at the data a bit more and see, can we do things without as many people or so? I, I don't think it's, I don't think it's a bad thing. I just think that, um, you know, anybody that ignores it, it it's, you know, it's going to, I think we know what's going to happen. I, listen, for 20 years, I feel like the word automation has been thrown around like a hacky sack. You can do more with less people today. It's not a theory. It actually can happen. Right. So when you go in front of somebody and they're like, oh, how many people you have? They're like, that's not a lot of people. You can't be very big. That, that's not actually true no. anymore. Right. It can be. But like you can actually do a lot of business with not that many people. Now you have the right people doing the right automation. You could over you could be up a, a, a workhorse like that's where the second level numbers come in right <laughs> i mean the reason profitability wasn't on the top of the chart and it was about growth and churn for so long was because they're saying hey you know like you know we we you know if you can hold your churn down and you can grow really fast and you know we think that the valuation is this the profitability part comes from more traditional banking right it's like can you make it through a downturn that's what right. you're going to see I really, oh, and, and, well, and, but I, I mean, some of this preemptive stuff that they're doing now before the downturn might be there or comes, is, is it what we learned from 2008? Like, you know, what we should have done in 2006 and seven before 2008 hit, where we were just, hey, everything was on fire. And then boom, it was just whew, straight down. And that's what I'm trying, that's what I've been trying to say, right? Like Charlie's been in a, in a position where he's dealt with big, big companies and big expectations and how funding gets unlocked through rounds, right? Like a lot of people haven't actually gone through that. I'm saying this is a precursor for every MSP out there who may say, hey, what does this have to do with me? And why do I care? Other than if my vendor is going out of business tomorrow. Right. Fair, fair question, by the way. <laughs> but it's like, hey, guys, if this is happening to this level, like you're the next one, right? Like pay attention and start making some like not saying go lay off your staff, but like start making some some hard decisions before you're forced to. Yeah, I agree. But, you know, a lot of those MSPs now and the super MSPs have gotten, you know, they've gotten the money to grow and acquire and all that, but they still can't find the people to fill the shoes that they need for the work that's coming in. And they're still maintaining a good EBITDA. I, I so think I think that that's a little different philosophy from an MSP side of the PE money versus yeah. a SaaS side. But I think those people are going to be shaken loose right now. Yeah. 
all these people aren't going to stay unemployed sitting at home, you know, waiting to figure out when the next funding round's coming. They got to go somewhere. Yeah, yeah, There's going to be a crossover between vendor employee, technology guy or girl, and MSP employee, technology guy or girl, right? Like they're kind of somewhat interchangeable, right? Yeah. How, how many how many shifted over the years from MSP to channel and then shift back because it's just a different world for them, right? Oh, a lot. Yeah. Yeah. A lot. So, so uh, and then Charlie, the other thing that I thought was interesting, like again, you know, like obviously, I'm sure you and P talked about the big, you know, the, the the thing that we've been talking about forever, right? Like how how these guys got billions of dollars upstairs right before the downturn, by the way. Lucky, I guess, right time, right place, right crystal ball. I mean, there's a lot of I, probably more fear and worry and bother than, than probably we've ever seen before from a larger vendor, right? Because when these big guys smash together, right? There's like, well, what's going to change? What, well, like, how do, uh, I'm in my, I'm, a, I'm dealing with my customer under this term and now I'm going to be under a completely misaligned term. Microsoft kind of just did this with NCE. I mean, like, I feel like, like, what do you, what do you do other than rip and replace everything? Which by the way, it's super not profitable. You don't get paid no. for your time to, <laughs> a lot of the time they're ripping replace systems like this no you're right i mean it's it, it's you know, the, you know I, I think it's just making sure like you're saying like you, you gotta you gotta be you gotta wake up and pay attention to what's going on around you 100 percent, guys and that and then and listen that's that's a great part about taking the castle mentality down and like, and whether it's formal or informal, right? There's a lot of good peer groups and accountability groups out there. And like people kind of like sign NDAs and open up the books and like share what's happening. And then there's like the informal networking, right? Hey, I met a guy at this conference from another city, another town, another state. I mean, this is how you find out what's actually happening on the street, right? But I think one thing that's not going away, it seems like at least from a legislative standpoint, it seems to be going this way. This security stuff seems to be getting deeper yeah yeah because we were talking about that before you hopped on is that when things like this when there's there's a lot of uncertainty from economy wars everything else the bad guys use it as an opportunity uh, i i would tell you right now and like i hate to even say it right how many times you run into an msp is like i don't get a break i don't get a vacation i don't know the last time i actually worked you know didn't work on a holiday it's kind of when the bad guys come out to play, you know, I mean, every time like the, you know, the big, the big hacks of last year all came on holidays. July right? no, 4th. So I'm looking forward to you know, that. Now people are worried about July 4th. Uh, should it? I mean, it's a valid concern. No, I would be, I'd almost be like, Hey guys, sorry, we got to come in and make sure like, you know, we're watching the needle here. <laughs> I mean, I hate to say that, but uh, it could happen. It really could. Um, how, how, funny, funny, you know, news. They finally said they're shutting down Internet Explorer. End of an era, huh? I don't know. Didn't they? Didn't they say that years ago? No, like the the, the official. Here you go. Let me share my screen. The official. I don't know if I like the New York Times. Look, they're behind a paywall. But um, there you go. The official end to Internet Explorer is here. Internet Explorer shutting down in a burst of nostalgia. Microsoft will disa be disabling Internet Explorer and directing Windows users to use Edge in the coming months. I mean, you'd be we'll surprised some, some websites still require Internet Explorer. I don't know where they've been, but current events, right? Well, and that's then, like Netscape. Netscape's still out there. I mean, yeah. yeah. I, I, <laughs> I mean, it's still it's still hidden out there, but I mean, it's it's still out there. Speaking about, I mean, I'm just hitting the feeds real quick on just what's happening today. Look at this. Just this morning, potentially dangerous flaw could allow ransomware attacks on Microsoft SharePoint and OneDrive, according to Proofpoint. Well, that's not good. So <laughs> Microsoft says functioning working as intended. Well, you might want to read deeper into this because this doesn't look good. 
talk about, you know, more, more recent things that have popped out. That was just this morning that that article came out from uh, CRM. And then the other one I saw as I was uh, coming in late to this was... There we go. Well, they, they taught three things, right? Atos, which is really a big a European IT company that looks like they're splitting up, but a big guy. Then yep. you got VMware. We're still talking about that. And then we got this other guy who just had $150 million round in funding. So like, it's still, still deals happening, right? But I think that um, you just got to be a little bit more careful about those. And then there was another one I was digging up right before I came on. Oh, well, here you go. This is a little bit of an old one, Charlie, but since I have you on like last week, here's the next big guy who might be up for sale. What do you think? Yeah, it's, it's interesting, right? Um, I mean, everybody's putting up the for sale sign because of this, right? I mean, come on. Well, yeah. And, and, and you know, I think it's, it's kind of, you know, some of the feedback with, um, you know, I'm trying to think who, who did it? Was it Dave Sobel? we saying, you know, early on was saying, Hey, you know, you know, with data going public, I don't know what that means. And, you know, I think, you know, if, if enable goes, I think it kind of shows, Hey, if you're, you know, if, if you are a MSP focus, like maybe the street just doesn't get it. I mean, I guess the, the, the big concern for everyone is what's the quality of whatever's out there, right? Like, you know, we, they seem to leave the lights on, right? They don't shut it down. They, you know, yeah. they at least keep selling it, right? But like, does it actually move anywhere once that event happens? Or is it just what you see is what you get? Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what that looks like. Um, I'm sure that it's not, you know, to, to, to your point with everything going on, I'm sure that there's there's not the the multipliers that uh, that are out there that may have been out there two, three months ago. Yeah. And then by the way, <laughs> the cryptocurrency market is just absolutely crashing right now. Yes, it is. I, I mean, this, I mean like just absolutely. And like Coinbase and then a competitive company that does something similar to Coinbase. I mean, they they're laying off thousands of people right now. Yeah. I, I was surprised. I, I was taking a flight home from Denver. I don't know, maybe a couple of months ago and a, a guy was on the flight and you were talking and he said, yeah, you know, I'm work for a company. We do crypto mining and is that the other thing? I was trying to like work through it. I mean, I don't know. What, what do you think, George? You would be big crypto. Remember what was it? Maybe three or four years ago, one of those Kaseya incidents where somebody was using Kaseya's RMM to deploy crypto mining scripts on individual computers without people knowing about it. And like these computers are actually as a collective being used as like a botnet to like mine cryptocurrency. And I was like, oh, that's right. So don't, you don't have to put it into a, a rack and plug it into your own electricity, just use everybody else's. I mean, it all sounded great, right? Until, you know. That, that, was, that was a big, I mean, I'm sure it still is, but that was a big issue. Uh, and the big targets were always uh, education, right? They go out yeah. universities, you got these computers sitting there. And um, the way that they build out some of this uh, technology is it will, if you're working on your machine, it doesn't, it doesn't mine anything. Yeah. It's just siloed. And then as soon as you stop working and, and it recognizes, Hey, all the resources are open, you know, it's time to go. Yep. And you know, it, 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 it burns up, but you know, it, it's definitely it's a, an interesting thing to see. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's interesting because we, we have some interest in doing some of that ourselves. And uh, China just put a kibosh on allowing how much power goes to the mining centers. So because they're draining power. So China's basically saying if you hit your allotment, you're done. So you better. So they're shutting down machines and miners and, and nodes just based on power usage. So it's, it's going to change the way that that industry is now mining. And miners as a whole 
are, are fading because of that, right? If, if you're going to get clamped down on power, Europe and the EU is looking at doing the same thing on the power requirements for obvious other reasons because of the climate that they've got in Ukraine and, and power and, you know, the... Uh, I, I'm not trying to just, be funny. Just that, but, but it's, it's, it's definitely something that's going to... That, that's an industry that's going to change major here in the next six to eight months. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to uh, bring up an episode of The Wire, but... <laughs> you know when they have these helicopters that go overhead and they start looking at like the heat maps of how much energy and heat's being generated in like houses and yeah. then they they think they're drug houses right and then they go raid them like no joke this is the thing i'm not making this up like that could happen to you yeah yeah it's, it's a possibility but if you do it how right you register you have in your garage yeah you can register with your with your uh power company yeah, I had a, uh, this happened a few years ago here uh, where I live, you know, and, and part of the area I live in used to be a bunch of farms. So depending on you know, how far you go, it's it still hasn't been developed. And uh, cold day, a rookie cop was driving down and for whatever reason opened up his window and he smells marijuana like it's like a punch in the face, right? And there's nobody around. <laughs> But this one house, and he sees smoke coming out of the chimney, pulls up, and it, it winds up being it's, you know, they're, they're growing it in there. And the guy that they left to watch it, that you know, this grow house, when he, when he basically was harvesting everything, he had all the, the, the stems and the plants left over. So in pure genius, he decides he's going to burn them. <laughs> and that's how they, and that's how they got caught. Otherwise, they would have never gotten caught. This cop's just driving down this country road, but his window is exactly. down. He's like, "What's going it, on around here?" It's crazy. Hey, but, you know, if they could they could have done that a little bit better. What, what do they call that? You know, better off being uh, lucky than good, right? Hundred percent, hundred percent. Well, you know, my my buddy Darren that always comes on here says that uh, a lot, like forty five thousand electric Mustangs got recalled, like this week. Like wow. the one that like the Mustang SUV kind of thing. Yeah. So I guess the electric cars aren't a hundred percent either. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about power usage, right? If it's not the miner and it's not the heat lamps, it's going to be the electric car. Now, if it works, well, something tells yeah. me good old fashioned gas is still going to be around for a long while. We're just, oh. we're just shifting from one source to another and it's just going to deplete. You know, you still got to create an energy grid that's going to deliver. Right. So. Yeah, one way know, or all another these things all these nothing moves quickly right i mean you look at you know my you know, i talked to my dad he's in his mid 80s and they used to have a uh, horse and wagon that delivered coal i just passed the horse and buggy the other day i was uh, but in amish country a little bit yeah uh it, the, uh, did you take the kids to uh, hershey i know I, I took i took the kids to crayola first that was a little bit easier hershey's next yeah, I saw I saw that video. What the Three that, Mile Island video? No, the the Crayola. Oh yeah, that, she, that young that young lady was picking her colors. She loved she loved it, man. She had like the so you take this bucket, empty bucket, and like you as much as you can fill in. It's a flat price, twenty bucks. So she got every color that I think they manufacture in that bucket. That's great. Old school crayons. Hey. George got George got Mr. Eraser to walk around behind her on the walls of the house. Yeah. Well. <laughs> let's 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 hope that that doesn't happen too often, or else we're gonna have problems. Well, I'll, I'll just uh, have to send uh, all colored sharpies to the house. We'll fix that. Erasable. Um, Char Charlie, where are we gonna see you out on the road next, man? I don't know. I think I, I think I got to meet you up, meet you for some cheesesteaks. It sounds like Peter, you, yo, Peter, cheesesteak. So, uh, let, hey man, no, no, they don't make good cheesesteaks in New Jersey. It's got to come to Pennsylvania. That's right. <laughs> we'll make sure we get you covered when we come into town. It sounds good. All right. Well, for everyone that uh, wants to learn more about Axiant, Axiant.com, I'm sure you guys know where that is. Hit Charlie up. I love talking to this guy. He takes practically any phone call sometimes, I wonder. Absolutely. But uh, he's easy to get a hold of, and he's a, he's, a, he's a Northeast guy. He won't bite, though. He's not as gruff as I am. Um, <laughs> so look him up on LinkedIn and chat with him a little bit. Um, MSPinitiative.com, we do these Tuesdays and Thursdays, 1 o'clock Eastern time. The, the tour, Channel Song Tour, is coming in the, the Northeast 
at the end of the month, and that's where we're going to see Charlie, right? We're going to come Absolutely. in, we'll get him, uh, get him some good grub. We'll hang out a little bit. So uh, definitely check us out at channelstrongtour.com. And uh, Charlie, I'll, I'll hit you up soon, my friend. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. You got it. Take care, Charlie.